Welcome to Titans Tonight with Keith Bullock, presented by Pinnacle Financial Partners. Pinnacle is proud to be the official bank of the Tennessee Titans. Visit titansbanking.com to discover what makes Titans Banking the ultimate checking for Titans fans. Pinnacle Financial Partners, member FDIC. Hello, everybody. I am Amy Wells. I'm here I guess I'm the captain now, as Mike Keith is out tonight. But Keith Bullock is here, of course, as it is his show. I am. Yep, your name is in the title, so you have to be here contractually, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> Coach Mac, Dave McGinnis, is also here filling in, so we're just going to have a great night of fun. Great night. I don't have a contract, but I'm still here. No, you don't. This is a personal favor, I think, per but I appreciate it's you a, being it is, here. It's a, it's a personal favor to both of you. <laughs> got that Titans radio shirt on, so you're doing all right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, I'm excited. Excited to have both of you here. Yeah, look, um, I'm just start off. You guys have obviously um, had the whole week to kind of get this uh, game behind you, talk about it and all those things. But I'm coming in hot because I don't get to get here until Wednesday. Right. And, um, you know, look, I listen to all the stations locally, listen to them nationally, watch the thing because, you know, I just um, – football across the board and there's a lot of teams that aren't playing well but I feel as if um you know Titan fans and the Titan community are getting a little spoiled just in the way that they kind of respond to um maybe the 0-3 start and what I mean coach is like look the first two games what happened happened could have won those games but you didn't you're 0-2 that's fine you come into a game where everyone here, oh, we got Malik Willis. Should be, he didn't do anything here for us, so we should take this. Our defense is great. We're going to do, look, you have to play every Sunday in this league. And I really think that Matt LaFleur put together a great game plan. You know, we saw what the Titans defense did the first two games. You had 56 and 53 smacking everything that's running right up the middle. It was lights out, shut it down. You know, you're, you're covering on the outside. You're putting pressure, getting pressure. And Matt LaFleur saw that. So, yeah, we are a good running team, but we're not going to test them right up the middle. Let's do, you know, a little RPO. Let's get Malik going early. Let's, um, you know, calm that aggressive defense down a little bit and, you know, run our game plan and see how it works. And the Titans came back and answered it was a game. You have an all-pro corner in Jair Alexander who made a great play. I've done this before in my career. You show a young quarterback something you want him to see, to think that he has it. You jump it, you make a play. That's what all pros do. That's what that young man on the other side of the ball was an all-pro. Now, a uh, first-year head coach, Brian Callahan, has to change his game plan up. Now he has to change his game plan, might have to pass a little bit more. With an O-line that was kind of shaky last year, we're still working on it. We got Bill Callahan, got some pieces. First rounder played better. Some, some guy, you know, it is what it is. But my whole thing, it's a work in progress. So, you know, to jump out after 0-3 and, and then, okay, you lose the game. Because at the end of the day, you watch the whole thing. Um, I'm sure the Titans coaching staff would have liked to have had the results that the Green Bay coaching staff had, like fourth quarter, release the hounds, rush, rush Malik, make him, put him in situations where you're forcing him to make, you know, off schedule throws. And he's not that calm in the pocket because I saw Malik Willis have a very clean pocket and make professional throws. We saw Malik's maturation the last preseason game. He showed you, okay, I can play here. Ran and coach Callahan made a decision Gave the young man an opportunity to get traded. He got, he got picked up. And Matt LaFleur did. I, I honestly think, Coach, that Matt LaFleur pretty much ran, like asked Malik, sat him in a room, what, do you, what are you comfortable with? What do you do well? And, oh, yeah, we're going to implement some of the offense you ran in Liberty with that RPO that you were successful with. Well, and, again, your point about, of course, I'm out in the community a lot. So yeah, I'm I, in these streets too. <laughs> I'm, in, I'm, in, I'm in. People are coming up to me constantly yeah. asking me what's going on. And I'm pretty much in the same vein as you are because I've just lived this. I mean, you I've know? lived it, you know, for 38 seasons, 31 as a coach. And so, I mean, there, I've been involved with 0 and 3 starts twice in my career. Nobody likes it. Once in 96 when we were brand new and took over the Cardinals, had a bad football team. Start off 0-3 and, and then just 
kept pushing and then regrouped. And then here in 09, we, we start, we don't only start off 0 and 3, we start <laughs> off 0 and 6. Uh, and with a fifty nine to nothing before, uh, I mean that's as that's about as big a I mean, can't get no oh, worse. That's look, the worst. That's the lowest I've ever been in my football career. Well, me too. But you know, zero and three is a hole. Zero and six is a ditch. <laughs> and so, and so, but what and we, they're kicking dirt on you. Yeah. <laughs> and what we did though, as a staff, we just regrouped. We got with our our team leaders and said, look, we're going to start all over. We start. Then we went five in a row. We we went eight out of our next ten. And the same thing happened in Arizona. We ended up winning seven games that year with a team that probably should. So you can't panic, all right? And here's the other thing. We're not having a draft in September. <laughs> these are the players you are playing with. And, and these guys, you've, you've put a lot of time into these players. These players aren't trying to play bad either, believe me. As hard as it is on the fans, and it is. And I listen and talk, I love the fans. I love that's part of my job now. Because I can interact with the fans. As a coach, you can't do it. Daily, you're in here, right. just like what you say. Now we're in the streets, and, right. we, and we can and we, and we can and we can talk to them, and I do. And so, it's no time to panic, but it is time to figure out some of the things you can't do. Some of the things structurally that you talked about were very evident. Against Indy, they attacked Indy in the middle of their defense. Quarterback draws is, is what they called. They did not call one quarterback draw here. They're not going to attack the inside. That would be exactly was, T. Sweat in there. No, and the two linebackers are playing really well. So they, well, they went to the edges. They went to the edges with an RPO that really wasn't an RPO. It was a run, run. Scheduled run. Scheduled run. And so they, they attack the edges. And the other thing that you start looking at, when things start going like that, you look at this defense for the first two weeks was a very good tackling defense. They missed 19 tackles in this game last week. And, you know, I had somebody ask me today on the radio, well, how many is too many? I said, that, that, <laughs> 19 is too many. That, that. But, I mean, so you're going to miss some. But anyway, so all of these things, all of these things start to add up and but get to a point. But just you, you are 0-3. There's three 0-3 teams in the league right now. But it's not a, it's not a death knell for anything. Okay. And that's the point. So, Mac, give me one of the things that you can point to to say – this team's going to be okay. We don't need to panic yet. Give me a bright spot from that matchup. Well, I think the two inside linebackers are playing really good football for this team right now. I mean, I'm going to I'm going to uh, look at linebackers pretty hard. I mean, Keith can tell you I was a pretty hard grader. I'll look at linebackers pretty hard. The, these two linebackers that we've got starting now are playing really good football, and I, I think you know our our, our corners are, are playing are, are playing are playing good ball. The thing that's happening is. And Keith brought it up too. Opponents are not, we're not putting our opponents in any enough stressful situations because they're playing from ahead. They're playing from ahead. And when they play from ahead, there's two things you can do you can choke the clock. You can choke the clock, and you can pull your horns in a little bit. And, and, and he was very uh, descriptive when he said, unleash the hounds. I mean, whenever you get a two-score lead in this league, when I was calling defenses, that's all I wanted to do is get my big dudes in a track stance and back my <laughs> people go. up and say, let's go. Let's go. We, we haven't been able to do that yet. The other thing, and the head coach brought this up, and I am glad he did because I'm looking at the same thing. When you are minus nine in turnover ratio after three games, you're not going to win many games. Not in this league. Two things in this league. Turnover ratio, always look at it, and then look at explosive plays given up and look at explosive plays made. Those two things, if you'll just pull out a sheet, take the names off the top of them and look at them in National Football League games, sometimes they'll tell you the tale of the tape. And we're behind in both of those categories right now. I remember, um, and Coach, you can um, uh, chime in on this towards the end, but I remember as a player with a uh, new defensive coordinator, um, Jim Schwartz, you know, um, that year, I think we started off maybe like one in four, one in whatever it was, similar to what's going on. But it was a game like last week that the Titans just endured where we had a game plan. We thought they're going to do this. And then they show a wrinkle in another package within the game. And I know as a player, 
it's like you're looking for answers because it's like you're saying they're calling scheduled off tackle runs and a lot of times the defensive end or the outside person wasn't there and even if there was one they had a puller for that person so in the middle of the game as a coach I know as a player I'm like man they're busting our butt with this like what and then players I've panicked in the game before so as a coach how do you keep players chill and them from not panicking when it gets stressful out of there and you can't stop anything well and here's here's and it, it, it it's a it's a holistic thing the first thing that has to happen is is your offense needs to be able to keep the ball so that you have enough time to get your guys together <laughs> on de- now, this is the truth yeah for sure and you know you know this is the truth every you, three and out you're like oh, you, well, no, no, no. The you, you and i've you and i've lived that before too because we've played here with the defensive unit that the that was the the post of the team right and and you know had to hold it up but the thing that you've got to be able to do you've got to be able to have cert- you can't go to everybody at once but you have to have certain guys you can go to say keith look here's what we are going to do right now we're going to change this instead of instead of hammering it and pushing it back inside i want to have the first guy up on the line of scrimmage splatter it to you you just run right. you run those types of things you can do, but you can't just wholesale bring everybody in there because everybody doesn't hear it and listen the same way. So you've, you've got to remain calm. The same thing you have to do with the entire squad. And we talked about these 0 and 3 starts. You've got to maintain your composure because that is very important. But you, games like that, I've been in them I've, I, as a coach where I've, you know, you don't bring everybody at once. You, you you get you get your safety that you know you can trust. You get your linebacker you know you can trust, and then you get at least because most of the, most of the defensive linemen just want to pin their ears back and go. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, and which is that's the way they live, which is great. That's what they should do. But you've got to be able to help from the second and the third level, saying, okay, we're going to let them go, and then here's what we're going to do: how to clean it up or at least get something get it stopped or as a defensive coach start calling some run blitzes to get it slowed down a little bit and maybe take that offensive coordinator kind of back off a little bit and then get it settled down all right Keith Bullock what's your bright spot what stuck out to you about this team that makes you say we're gonna be all right um I think the bright spot is the way that you know they've played I'm taking the first two games, you know, just because you see what type of ball they can play. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, it happens sometimes. You get outmaneuvered and, you know, your game plans aren't with. And But then even in that, like, you always need one or two things to go your way. Um, Mm -hmm. To what Coach Max said, they haven't – the defense hasn't created a turnover yet. Um, So – to answer your specific question, I like the way the defense is playing. Gives them more motivation going into a primetime game. Um, the offense has played well. They have played good football. Um, you take away, what, two plays in the first two games, you're sitting at 2-1. and one. Um, That being said, like Coach Mack just said, you don't – you just practice harder. You know what I mean? You don't want to press. Now is not the time to press. And what I mean by press is, like, think that you have to make a play. Think that you have to do someone else's job. Everyone needs to do their job within the scheme of the offense, defense, and special teams. But when you take the practice field, like, that's where it really starts. Like, know your angles as a safety. Know, you know, like, I don't know how other people watch film, but I know sometimes – with 17 games and you play 80 snaps or 60 to 80 snaps, you're going to make a play. You're going to get an interception. You're going to get opportunistic. But I really studied to try and figure out where on third down I can make a play, where when they get in the green in that fringe area to take away points. Like those are the type of things as individuals you need to do. That Like Kevin Byard isn't here. You can see in his game those are the things that he did. That's how you become a playmaker. I like to consider myself, I was played linebacker, but I was a playmaker because I feel that in games when my team needed to play, I could put myself in position, you know, in position. That doesn't mean I'm going to make it, but I know what I'm looking for. And, you know, I, you know, I don't know what type of film study goes. And I know they study film, but I know that would help. Well, no, but that that's 100% true. I mean, I'm sitting right here with you. I mean, I've lived a lot of games with you. I mean, and you know we you 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 talk about it a lot 
call him Mr. Monday Night, but there's a reason. <laughs> first yeah. of all, first of all, he was completely full of it when he said it <laughs> because we hadn't even we hadn't even we hadn't That's even a fact. we hadn't even <laughs> yeah. I know I w- I was there. He, we hadn't even played a Monday Night game yet. And he went, oh yeah, I'm Mr. Monday Night. I, I brought him in. I said, what the hell are you? What 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 what? what, what? He said, no no, Mac. He said, Wait, I, did you really call him out on it? Yeah, I said, what the hell? <laughs> he said, don't, don't worry, Mac. He said, he said, I just we want to show up. Baby. He said, I, he said I, I'm, I'm, I just want to give him something. And I said, okay. So, <laughs> okay. We go, but to his point, just what he was talking about structurally, we knew that that New Orleans, in a certain down and distance, certain field of position, certain splits, ran what we call a double dagger or a double dig. And Keith was playing middle linebacker, you know, in the in the nickel defense. And so we worked all week in practice, you know, and he would call it out, double dig, double dig, dagger, you know, and it worked three picks, three picks off of it. And so then after the game, he said, see, Mr. Money Knight. <laughs> and, and, and <laughs> it worked. Well, the Titans are getting ready to take on the Miami Dolphins on Monday Night Football, and we are going to talk all about it. But first, we have to get a quick break. This is Titans Tonight with Keith Bullock, presented by Pinnacle Financial Partners. Welcome back to Titans Tonight with Keith Bullock, presented by Pinnacle Financial Partners, the official bank of the Tennessee Titans. I'm Amy Wells, Keith Bullock, Coach Mack. We're all here, and we are talking about the Tennessee Titans as they are getting ready to head to Miami to take on the Dolphins on Monday Night Football. Kickoff for that game is at 6.30, which is a little bit different than what you're used to for Monday Night Football. So just remember that. If you're looking for it, it's at 6.30. And Titans Countdown goes on the air at 5 o'clock, but I'll, remember, I'll remind you later. You nearly Don't got worry. electrocuted down there in that stadium. I did almost get electrocuted in that stadium. We've had some good times <laughs> Seven down and in a Hard half Rock. hours, we were on the air, and there was a huge lightning storm, and they evacuate everybody except Amy Wells has got ears on with a microphone out in the middle wow. of the field trying to get Albert a, Einstein-ish. Try, well, uh, <laughs> okay, so here's the thing. <laughs> I'd get a signal so we could get some <laughs> yeah. reports. And I asked Mike Keith, I said, Mike, how about Amy down there? I said, is that all right with the lightning? <laughs> I should be fine. She'll be fine. Yeah, <laughs> it's okay. What could possibly go wrong? Um, yeah, they uh, it, they are notorious at Hard Rock Stadium for having terrible, like, signal, um, which is what you need for the radio, like a radio signal. Sure. And so that's how I talked to the booth when I was on the sidelines. <laughs> The problem is that in a lightning storm, really the only way that I could get a signal was to like wave my oh, microphone in the air. That's crazy. Next to the lightning, essentially, and um, try to communicate. Because otherwise, when I walked into the tunnel, all the sound in my ears, so all of the broadcast went quiet because I couldn't get a signal anymore. So I basically had to walk into the tunnel during these rain delays when we had this eight hour game. I had to walk into the tunnel, get whatever information I needed, and then walk into the middle of the field, wave this microphone around, attracting some sort of signal or electricity, wow. and say what I needed <laughs> to say. Time. And that, yeah, exactly. So um, I didn't realize how dangerous that job was going to be when I took it. She was hardcore. Um, but we made it through. And she it was did a, it. It was a great game. Um, but then the Titans went back and played on Monday Night Football last year. Yes. And it was a phenomenal game. It was very exciting. And I kind of had forgotten a lot of the details of the game. And I'd forgotten how intense it was. There were only three minutes left in the game when the Titans scored two touchdowns and converted a two-point conversion That's when the and game an extra came on. point. <laughs> yeah, uh, but I mean, I I remembered it being an exciting game. I remembered it being a Titans victory. I did not remember how much activity happened in such a short amount of time. Well. I was watching from home, and I was joking that's when the game came on. But, like, as, you know, rooting for the Titans, you're watching, you're watching, and it's kind of like they're not out of it. And it looked like Miami kind of put it away. Uh Uh-huh. But uh, they didn't. Yeah. Um, I think they didn't convert on a third. It was something that they kind of messed up. It was a and third the, down. Right. And then the Titans took advantage of it and they got the ball back, took advantage of it, and they just started balling. It was a great um, – game for Titans fans with the new quarterback, um, Will Levis. Um, the thing is, too, since we're on that topic, I know my I brought up Will Levis. Um, what people have to understand is last year, Will Levis went out there. There was no game plans on him. 
Like, no. he went out there. Nobody knew what he was going to do. There were no game plans. So, you know, coming into this first three games of the season, maybe towards the end they had something on them. But definitely this year, these defensive coordinators have their Will Levis stoppers, and they're going to put him in, you know, unfavorable positions that they have seen him in. They're going to make him uncomfortable. And I think that's part of the maturation process that you heard Coach Callahan may say in some of his pressers this week. You know, it's they're still learning. He's learning – a second system in two years. Let me ask you a question, Mac. How much tape do you need on a person to feel like you have a pretty good idea of their their habits, their intricacies, some of uh, to be able to really feel like you can game plan for them? Two tiered two tiered answer. If you've got the same quarterback, we're talking quarterbacks here, yeah, and you got the same play caller, you probably need about five. Okay. If you've got the same quarterback and a different play caller then you need five with that play caller because it's, 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 it's very different. It, it's very different. Now, players have tendencies, but people calling plays also have tendencies. And so when you're putting a game plan together, I mean, whenever, you know, I was a coordinator and would put game plans together or if I was in charge as an assistant head coach saying, look, here's what we need to concentrate on. You look at the, you look at the player tendencies, but you also look at, to play callers tendencies and try to mesh those together so um if for for me as a player from a player standpoint <clears throat> the way they gave it to us is a four game breakdown so that's how i started learning so it would be hard for me the first two games of the year third game because they're gonna like you saw um green bay had a game plan for indianapolis and they had a game plan for the tennessee titans so once you have four eh you're going to pretty much have their main plays that they're going to do. So me, I get my film on Monday. I'm just going to sit there and watch all four games. Just let them run. Um, and then on Tuesday, kind of the same thing. And I already know, okay, what they like to run on first down, what passes they like to run, their formations. And then by the time we come in and I get with Mac on Wednesday, we get our early meeting um, while they're in special teams. So now I got the game plan. So by the time I get out there on Wednesday, I'm already – in tune to it so then as I got older what Mac is saying like say like my last three years it was more about the coordinators who we were playing against because these guys are jumping around and um Gunther Cunningham used to always <laughs> I didn't get it when I was younger he used to what's his name um the big O uh he used to call um North Turner uh, or the no nah, it's not North Turner the he was the coach for the Dallas Cowboys Cam Cameron Cam Cam Cameron Cam Cameron the big O oh, the big O the big <laughs> O he's like the big O always likes the, he's always gonna have this in his so then that kind of had me like thinking and then you the way you would speak you would be like look I've been playing against this guy for and like you just think you would be saying words but then these coordinators would show up different places so then my breakdown becomes easier because I'm like oh this guy likes to run power or he likes to run trips or he likes to run his cluster so packages. as a player you remember those little nuggets that mac threw out in a in a conversation or in a film breakdown or in some sort of a game plan even if they were with a different team before yeah that's I mean, part of being a veteran yeah it's, it's like and i was an all pro like it's one of those things too like michael jordan as he got older you know he's not going through the lane dunking and all that but even on the wizards in year 21 he has a fadeaway and is still averaging 21 points a game. I remember um, before I started working with Mac um, early in my career, I was with Gunther, and I do a lot of athletic things. He's like, yeah, that's cute, kid, but eventually you're going to have to use your technique. And so as I get cute. older with Mac, you know, working with Mac, like at 30, I had to use some technique. I was still athletic, but, you know, there were certain things that, like, to what you, you asked me, yeah, like it's all – it's all built up from day one I got here in my rookie year until when I left the Tennessee Titans after year 10 and then I had one year with the Giants. Um, like I felt like I was a coach that one year with the Giants because, I, you know, um, but that being said, to answer your question, yeah, it's um, your profession. Like you're never going to forget, you know, if you go on to do something else after this, like you're never going to forget the things that made you great at doing this. The thing about it is, and Keith brings up a great point, that's why, of course, I've been fortunate in my career. I mean, I've – been with eight Hall of Famers. I've coached great linebackers, Keith Bullock being one of them. But you can talk to them a different way. Like when I would sit and talk with Keith and David Thornton in that early meeting on Wednesday game plan, I said, look, I've gone against this guy. Here are his quarter beaters. Here are his cover three beaters. Here are his cover two beaters. 
And now this is what you can do against these guys. Because here's what's coming out of this formation. If we're if we if we call quarters, KB, you can, get you can this go one. you can go steal <laughs> yeah. one. Yeah, that's, you can go that's steal one. Yeah. You can steal one because here's what he does. And those types of things, but you can only talk like that when you're talking with veteran players because young players are still trying to figure out where am I lining up? You know, where am I, what am I looking at? You know, when you get past the point as to where you're not having to tell them where to look, then you can start looking for things that they can jump. So when you have an older team as a coach, like if you have a position group that has some veteran players, Can I stop guys, you just a minute? Yeah. That's the big difference now in, in, in the NFL. When I first got in the league, there was no free agency, no salary cap. Um, I had Otis Wilson, Mike Singletary, and Wilbur Marshall. <laughs> Everybody and, was and, old. And, Everybody and, was and, old, and yeah. And Ron Rivera for years. Yeah. So we could just rattle off, okay, here, here you know, we're playing the Vikings. Here's what Jerry Burns does. Got it. Got you, Matt. Got, now. You pick up where you left off. Absolutely. Now, Burns was so smart. Now when, when veteran players, now when you start getting 30% of your roster new, and then if you're a brand new team mm -hmm. like this one is, and a guy's brand new, even though they're veterans coming from different spots, it takes a minute. That's very interesting. Yeah, I guess you don't think about that, that just the construction of teams has changed over the years. And so my guess would be you have to adjust the way that you're teaching to accommodate the fact that Teams are built in much different ways than they used to be. And, and, and Keith Bullock and I had this conversation once, and he was getting a little bit snippy with me one time <laughs> because we were we had a, we had we had some new new guys in there, and I was going over it, and he looked at me and said, "Mac, I've heard this." I said, "I know you have, but these dudes haven't." So sit here with me and help them. Yeah, I'll be trying to leave early. <laughs> <laughs> Max <laughs> like, nah, you good? Just sit right there. We got about 45 more minutes <laughs> of just, install. Just buckle up, buddy. You just get comfortable. And it worked out pretty good yeah, for nah, both of us. Like, I, but I understand, though. You mm -hmm. know, like, um, that's what I – yeah, that's what – like, with sports, football is specifically, like, it's easy when there's no gray area. You know, mm -hmm. black, white, this is what it is. This is what I expect. And if you get told what it is – and you know what to expect. If it's not done, that's on you. That's the difference between professional, college, and any other sport you can think of. Well, and as a veteran, as an older guy, understanding what your role is in, in that instance, in that room, has to not only give you some credibility with the younger guys, but also then become someone that can be leaned on in times of trouble because it's another person who can communicate the message, right? Yeah, for sure. And and there's a, a more of a expectation of accountability to as us as players of those players than really probably as the coach because at the end of the day, the coach is – Here's the assignment. This is what you need to do. Now we go out there on the field and practice it. And Coach Mack will tell you, like, if you're messing this up on Thursday, get his ass off the field. I don't want him out here on Sunday because that's those are key downs. We're practicing third down. So if you keep busting this on Thursday in practice when we're going, you know, three-quarter speed, what you going to do when Andre Johnson is running running this route on Sunday? You understand what I'm saying? So there's an accountability that takes place during the week of practice, you know, um, that uh, needs to be understood from the leaders on the team. And the hard thing about being a leader, and this was part of your question, is because <laughs> you're talking all that junk and then you go out there on Sunday and you miss three tackles and you miss an assignment and it, how much how how big is your voice in this room now? Yeah. You know what I mean? So that's 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 tough to go out there perform and demand your teammates to perform too. Like it's tough. How hard is it as a coach to know that you're responsible for the install, you're responsible for the game plan, but someone like Keith Bullock or someone like your other veterans, that person's responsible for really enforcing the message well, is you that hard that because no it's not it, 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 it it's you appreciate it as a uh -huh. coach but you you learn the guys you can lean on i mean this, this is bringing up such great memories for me when i was with the bears steve mcmichael god you know god bless him one of the smartest defensive tackles i've ever and of course i had an, uh, a hall of famer mike singletary but mcmichael if something was going wrong during the game he would get on a headset and he said hey Young guru, get this guy out of the game. <laughs> Just get him out of the game. 
because he's he's not he's it's not true. and he was right and Keith would say the same thing during practice he, he said Mac he can't do that he can, when we used to bring rookies in here we'd go through training and he'd, he'd say Mac he can't do it <laughs> he can't do it no talent man no <laughs> no he said Mac and and, and and you know what and I look I said Keith well everybody needs Mac you know I said I do know but right now it's not the time he's a coach got to yeah. be diplomatic <laughs> said, I do know. <laughs> But you appreciate that as a coach because the only reason they a, a veteran players do that because they they understand the gravity of it. This is serious business on a Sunday or a Monday or a Thursday or whenever you're playing. It's serious business, and you want guys because I used to try to impart to rookies all the time. You're not only playing with your money, you're playing with my money. Yeah, you're playing you with beat. their money. You're playing with their families. And so all of it all of it is very, very important. And that's why after we get you get through, that's why Keith and I have such a bond now. We've been through it. Yeah. You've been through it and you know who you can trust. All right. Well, we've got to take another break here on Titans tonight. Would also like to point out it is six thirty five and Keith Bullock has not said back in my day yet. So on the other side of this break, we're gonna fix that. Stick with us right here on <laughs> Titans tonight with Keith Bullock. <laughs> You're listening to Titans Tonight with Keith Bullock, presented by Pinnacle Financial Partners. Pinnacle is the official bank of the Tennessee Titans. Visit titansbanking.com to learn more about Pinnacle. I'm here. I'm Amy Wells, Keith Bullock, Coach Mack. You're all here. Guys, can we talk a little bit about the Miami Dolphins and their quarterback situation? Because this is just, uh, I mean, confounding what they have to figure out this week. Um, For... Anybody who is listening who is uh, not totally plugged in with what's going on in Miami right now. So Tua Tagovailoa is on injured reserve with a concussion. He is a non-factor. He will not be playing this week under any circumstances. So then they have backup quarterback Skylar Thompson. He started against the Seahawks in week three, so on Sunday. He leaves the game with a chest injury. Not good. Quarterback Tim Boyle finishes the game. Seven of 13. 79 passing yards, one sack. They do not win the ball game, but, you know, he finishes the game. So then the Dolphins signed Tyler Huntley off of the Baltimore Ravens practice squad. He is fine. He can probably play. He is 3-6 and six as a starter. Um, and so the Miami Dolphins have some decisions that need to be made. It is worth noting the Dolphins are 1-5 and five without Tua as their starter since Mike McDaniel came on in 2022. And it's also worth noting that the Dolphins are 2-8 and eight in primetime games since McDaniel became their head coach. And that has nothing to do with being a quarterback, but we're about to play in primetime, so we may as well talk about it. Um, coach Mack, as you look at their situation and the decisions that they have to be ma- to make this week – um, when do they need to decide who their quarterback is going to be for themselves? Not that we will be privy to, but for themselves, when do they make that decision? Well, they're deciding right now. Okay. As we sit here and the three of us are talking, mm-hmm. they're, they're talking to, they're, they're, they're deciding right now. It's, it's a pretty unique situation. Uh, when you look at this offense in totality, it is, it, it is, it's got a lot of eye candy to it. But the biggest thing it's got is speed. Mm -hmm. They've got speed, and they just need a quarterback. They need a quarterback just to be functional because the speed that they have uh, as a defensive coach, and I'll I'll let Keith talk. He's watched them. I broke them down and watched them. You've got to surround this speed. You can't chase it because if you chase his speed, you can can never be behind this speed. So the quarterback situation that that, that we're talking about, you know, I, 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 I watched their quarterback get hurt. And he jet, he he got crunched twice, so he comes he comes out of the ball game. the the thing that you're the thing that you're looking at though with with uh, with Snoop Huntley is a guy that can <laughs> he can he can run yeah he can run run. You look at his numbers. I mean his his athletic numbers. He's an athlete. So Titans had an issue with a running quarterback this last week. Teams look at what hurts you. So can they craft a game plan where they'll they'll they will use his legs, they will use their speed and then put him in ideal throwing situations. You're asking me, could he play? Absolutely, he could. I think that um, everything you described is one thousand. This is Titans Radio, right? 
This is, yeah. Yeah, that, that is a, a Miami Dolphins problem. <laughs> 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 that being said, um, it, it's just another tough one to game plan for because you don't know what you're going to get. And That's to why what you Mac, asked the question. Yeah, to what Mac was saying, look, they're already, they already pose a lot, but I think that with Tua not playing, they're going to have to simplify their game plan a little bit because they'll come out in one formation – reset to another formation, then motion one person, stop, then motion another person just to run a dive play. You understand what I'm saying? So all of that is window dressing to get your um, get your defense, somebody out of place and get a mismatch and they take advantage of it with the speed from their running back position and wide receiver's position. Obviously, we know Tyreek and we know Waddle. Um, we just don't – I personally don't think that the quarterbacks have the accuracy – to make the throws that Tua was making, but it's just going to depend who plays because if you get Huntley out there, of course you're going to get some pressure on the quarterback, but you don't want the same situation that you had last week where he's a, a one-read guy. He's not there. Up, oh, well, I'm out. So if you're the Tennessee Titans and you are starting to put a game plan together, are you not necessarily starting with – Figuring out what the quarterback's going to do and containing him. Are you focusing right now on the the skill position, the Tyree Kills of the world? You focus on what just what he talked about, the motions. The the two highest pre snap motion teams in the league right now at this point, percentage wise. Green Bay Packers, Miami Dolphins. Sure. Highest percentage. Of, of pre-snap motion, and, and Keith is right. And plus, Miami is the one that started implementing that fast motion yes. that is just about like you know they're, they're skinning the cat as far as snapping the ball with guys moving downfield. And, and they do it from, you know, they, they'll move Tyreek Hill up in a three-point stance. Looks like a frog standing, you know, right <laughs> off the hide him. They're they're trying to hide him, him off, of, off of the tackle's hip. And then we, he goes in, in screaming across in motion and then turns up really quick. So – what he described is true. There, there's so much uh, pre-snap eye candy. What you've got to decide, and, and when you start teaching things like this, Keith and I have been in these kind of meetings before and said, look, don't worry about all of this. This call, we've got to surround, and that's what I talk about when I talk about surrounding that motion and surrounding that speed. You don't want to be chasing all of that. You can't be chasing all of that. You've got to get set, and then you've got to be able to bump it, or you've got to be able to pass it off. Because if you start chasing it, that's what they want. So to uh, even to add on to what Coach Mack is saying, you know, as a defense, boom, I make the call, and then you got all these jackrabbits moving around. Like the best thing you could do is slow it down, because at some point they're going to have to settle down, and then you see that clock starting to go down a little bit, and then. Boom, they're going to settle down. The quarterback eventually has to get someone set. But if they're, you know, that fast motion, as he explained, it's not going to be a bunch of herky-jerky. It's going to be pretty much fast set hut. But all they're just trying to dress up the play they really want to get to um, and confuse you and hope that you do do like a five, uh, five alarm car and you're just like going crazy. So – how do you simulate that in practice? How do you train your eyes to see through all of the motion to what's actually happening? Well, um, you know, coaches do a great job of simulating these drills. I remember, you know, one year maybe, you know, Coach Fish being like, you know, on the snap, you know, when we break the huddle, everybody just run around and, you know, you just run around and then line up where you're supposed to line up. So they simulate drills that aren't really – realistic because that will obviously make your motor skills and practice move faster so when you get in the game it's all slow like you know if there's not 12 people out there and there's an 11 and you know because in practice they're going to mess with you Jeff was great at doing that he's going to make it as hard as you can as he can in practice so it's easy in the game yeah I mean you would do that that, that and fish was was really good at it and it, and and I learned you know I learned a lot about that he would call it because Jeff Fisher, and I did it when I was a head – Jeff Fisher ran the cards for the scout team. Mm -hmm. So he would show up. But it, when we were playing a team that was doing this, and there's plenty that did it. You know, the, the 49ers did it a lot. I mean, we – they used we, to muddle huddle back so in the muddle day. Huddle. And so what we would we – Back would, in my day. Yeah, there it is. There it is. <laughs> back in we my got day. it. You got it. It was a muddle huddle. The muddle huddle. So, but what how Fish would say, he would show he would show the card to the show team where they were eventually going to line up, and he said, now, this is explode. 
So as soon as we come out, everybody go everywhere. Scatter. Yes, yeah, scatter. The five of you sit, the linemen, but everybody else scatter. And then on the second count, get to where you're supposed to be like this. Cool. And so when you're getting set, and Keith would call the defenses, and he would, you know, you'd get set, and you get used to it because you've got colored jerseys to simulate who's a tight end, who's a wide receiver, who's a running back for the scout team. But he's right. It trains your motor skills to move faster. And to what Mac was saying, you don't want to be – that's why you probably run a zone. So all you have to do is bump left to tell your D-line to bump left or bump right. Um, safety's rock and roll, meaning one safety might have to come down into the front. One goes in. So there's not so many moving parts on defense. Because you're just trying to keep everybody in, yeah. in the Sur bubble. Surround the motion. All right. Well, we're going to take one more quick break. And when we come back, we are wrapping everything up here on Titans Tonight with Keith Bullock, presented by Pinnacle Financial Partners. Welcome back to Titans Tonight with Keith Bullock. We are getting ready to take on the Miami Dolphins on Monday Night Football this upcoming Monday. Titans Radio will have that game, so please join us for Titans Countdown before kickoff. That starts at 5 o'clock Central Time on all of your Titans Radio stations, and then kickoff is at 6.30. The Tennessee Titans and the Miami Dolphins on Monday Night Football. It's the same thing he used to do in meetings. <laughs> what, is, he, is he doodling? Yeah. He, he, uh, he, he, I was listening I, to you. I, I, yeah. I, I, no, no, he paid attention, but I, I used to sit there and watch what are you drawing now? Active doodling. <laughs> what are you doing now? That's okay. You can doodle during the show. Well, it, whatever it, it, whatever it, makes it, you it, happy. It, it, as calm as he is, mm -hmm. like when he's sitting, oh. he's hyper. Yeah. Yeah. Fidgety. Hey, That's okay. So, I just broke my pen. So. It's all good. You're fidgety too. So <laughs> I, <clears throat> I came in hot on um, to start off the show. That's you okay. You're going to wrap so, it up um, kind of feisty too? I'll just wrap up my points. I guess my point was, look, we got here, the Titans got here in 99, 2000, you know, Jeff Fisher, they had Eddie George and that crew, Music City. I was part of that. But then we had the little downside. And then we had the Tyrants. We had the Tennessee Tyrants. And then you had Mike Malarkey, Kevin Byard, all that. Taylor Lewan, you know, Ben Jones. You had the boys. You had the boys, right? So Generation 1 had their identity. Generation 2 had their identity as Rhett. Brian would say the generations of Titans, right? So now we can go into this is generation three. This team has to establish their identity. They've only played three games. You know, you got to be fair to them. You know, they're trying to build something. We we're just saying off air, Coach Mack, uh, we got to 12, we got to 10 and 0 that year in 2008, but that started in 06. Yep. You know, yeah. 06, 07, and in 08, we put it together. So to those real Titan fans, I know y'all ain't worried, but those fair weather ones that just can't wait till Monday to, you know, jump on Twitter or whatever you do to complain, <laughs> I just chill out a little bit, man. Start your complaints at the end of October. October, okay. Yeah, That's a look, good time. Yeah, of course. You, you got to give got, people a, a start time. You could, look. We've started off 0 and 6 and almost made the playoffs. You got night. You got 17 games. You can start 0 and 8 and go 9 and 8, and still play a wild card. Man, this season it's a long season and it gets fun as it goes. But yes, the the new identity Titans <laughs> you need to establish their identity as they will. Um, because I like how this last game, they got D-Hop going, right? right? You saw what Ridley can do. We've seen what Pollard can do. You already know what Tajay can do. You know what the offensive line can do when they are in a favorable situations. And they've been in a lot of favorable situations this year. Got out of hand last week. It happens. You saw what the defense. We know what the defense can do. Seems like special teams has their stuff together. So let's go into Monday night. Optimistic. Miami's down. All you need is one, right, Mac? Just need one win. They all, that's all they let you do is play one at a time. Yep. Let's do this one. All right. Let's do this one. The Tennessee Titans are taking on the Miami Dolphins on Monday night football. What's the weather report? I know that I, uh, you hurricane know, is supposed to come. It's going to miss yeah, Miami. Yeah, it's going it, to miss it's Miami. It's going up the west. You it's coming to us here. It's going to be a chance of rain. There he is. There he is. There he is. And a 20% <laughs> chance of rain, according to Rhett Bryan, our, reg our resident weatherman. Weather Jesus has so spoken. So <laughs> there you go. We got the weather report. But it's going to be a great game. It's a primetime game. It is Monday night football. And we are excited. So be sure to tune in to Titans Radio. Titans Countdown begins at 5 o'clock. We are going to have Ernest Jones. We have Seamus 
on Titans Countdown. There's so many fun things that are happening before the game even starts. Kickoff for that game is at 6.30 p.m. Central Time. Titans, Dolphins, Monday Night Football. Thank you for joining us. For Titans tonight, for Keith Bullock, Coach Mack, I'm Amy Wells. We'll see you guys later. Razor out. <laughs>